To many people, the death penalty is seen as a just punishment for a crime committed. To others, it is cruel and unusual punishment. When this punishment is served to young people, it is all the more horrifying. It is hard for us to believe that young people could carry out such heinous crimes that result in them being placed on death row. Let's see some of the youngest people that were sentenced to death. Number 4. Scott Carpenter Scott Carpenter is the youngest to be executed in the U.S. since the death penalty was reintroduced in 1976. In 1994, Carpenter filled his pickup truck with $37 worth of gasoline, then went into a convenience store where he placed a sandwich, soft drink, and chewing tobacco near the cash register. He then proceeded to stab the store owner, 56-year-old A.J. Kelly, in the neck. Kelly's body was found in the minnow room of the convenience store, which was located near Lake Eufaula in eastern Oklahoma. Investigators speculated Carpenter said he wanted to buy some bait, then followed Kelly to the room and murdered him. He was interrupted as two men, one of them a retired Oklahoma City police detective, entered the store. They gave chase out of the store, then wrote down the car's license tag number as Carpenter drove away. He was apprehended quite quickly. Carpenter pleaded no contest to one charge of the first degree and asked for the death penalty, stating that he saw no future in spending the next 60 or 70 years of his life behind bars. Carpenter had no prior criminal record and was subsequently sentenced to death by lethal injection. He did not appeal his sentence. Carpenter talked to his mother for 80 minutes prior to the execution. Before being put to death, he made a final statement saying, I tell the young and old, do not stray onto the wrong path in life as I did. I speak from experience when I say it's a long and bumpy road with a lot of regret and few second chances. The victim, 56 years old at the time, was described as a loving father who worked two full-time jobs so his family could escape poverty. Carl Kelly, a former police officer, wished he could have spoken with Carpenter in an effort to understand what makes a man who has no criminal record take a life. In a separate letter, he also apologized to the family of the victim. He could have named up to five friends and relatives to witness his death. Instead, Carpenter requested that no one, not even the attorney who had befriended him in recent months, be present. Carpenter was pronounced dead some 11 minutes after the lethal injection was administered. Number 3. J. Pinkerton Pinkerton was born on February 14, 1962, on Valentine's Day. Doesn't seem fitting, though, that a cold-blooded murderer would be born on a day for lovers. J. Pinkerton was a known burglar in the Amarillo area to police. Pinkerton was the 57th person executed in the U.S. since 1976, the 13th person executed in Texas, and the 16th executed by lethal injection. Pinkerton, an apprentice meat cutter, was executed for physically attacking and carving up Sarah Don Lawrence in 1979 during a burglary of her Amarillo home when he was only 17 years old. Mrs. Lawrence was stabbed more than 50 times and her throat was slashed. Detectives followed a trail of footprints to Pinkerton's house several blocks away, but he was released for lack of evidence after a brief interrogation. Pinkerton was also convicted in the death of Sherry Welch, who was attacked while working in a furniture store. Even before the final appeals were rejected, Governor Mark White announced he would not halt the execution, describing the crimes as two of the most brutal and heinous crimes imaginable. The slayings terrorized the Amarillo area, prompting people to buy extra locks for doors and guns to protect themselves. Pinkerton was ultimately executed, and his father was present for the execution, standing just a few feet from his son hanging onto a rail. Jay Pinkerton's last words were spoken to his father. He said, Be strong for me. I want you to know I'm at peace with myself and my God. He then recited a prayer, looked back at his dad and said, I love you, Dad. Pinkerton was then injected, saying, I feel dizziness, I feel dizziness, yawned after those words, then passed away. Number 2. Stephen Judy Stephen Judy brought a new meaning to the term sociopath. In 1979, Judy physically attacked and took the life of 21-year-old Terry Chasteen, along with her three children, Misty, 5 years old, Stephen, 4, and Mark, 2, when Judy was only in his early 20s. He made a full confession in court, explaining how he was able to gain control over the young family. Terry Lee Chasteen started her workday with her normal routine of taking her three young children to their babysitter's house. Along the way, Chasteen had car trouble. The single mom pulled to the side of the road and readily accepted help from a man who she thought was simply being a good Samaritan. Stephen Judy was anything but a good Samaritan. After fixing her tire but disabling her car, Judy offered Chasteen and her children a ride. Within an hour, Terry and her children were dead. After Judy pulled over, he removed a coil from the car so that the car would not start. He offered the Chasteen family a ride and they agreed. Once he had them in their car, he drove off into the woods and sent the kids to walk ahead. 
He proceeded to physically attack Terry and then take her life as the children watched. He threw her lifeless body in the creek, then threw the children one by one into the deepest parts of the water. All three children died as a result of drowning. As Judy gave his confession in court, he told the jury that he would recommend the death penalty for himself because if, if he was released, he would definitely do it again. He even hinted that a member of the jury could be his next victim. Judy was sentenced to death and executed on March 9, 1981 by the electric chair. He ordered prime rib and lobster for his last meal. His final words before execution were, I don't hold no grudges, this is my doing. Sorry it happened. Number 1. Sean Sellers Sean Sellers was sentenced to death for crimes he committed age 16 and while suffering from apparent severe mental health problems. Sellers died for taking the life of a store clerk. He was 16 when he shot and fatally injured Robert Bauer, a convenience store clerk in Oklahoma City. According to the testimony of Sellers' best friend, Richard Howard, who was with him at the time of the incident, Sellers said that he killed Robert Bauer because he wanted to see what it feels like. Later on, Sellers shot and took the life of his mother, Vonda Belafato, and stepfather, Lee Belafato, while they slept in their Oklahoma City home. Howard testified that just after the incident, Sellers had come to his house and told him that he had killed his parents. Sellers began his final statement. He said, All the people that are hating me right now and are here waiting to see me die, when you wake up in the morning, you're not going to feel any different. You're going to hate me just as much tomorrow as tonight. When you wake up and nothing has changed inside, reach out to God and He will be there for you. Reach out to God and He will heal you. Let Him touch your hearts. Don't hate all your lives. He then told his seven witnesses, I love you all. Sellers acted almost cheerful during his statement, straining against his straps and raising his head to look at his grim-faced witnesses. He was the first person in the U.S. put to death in 40 years for crimes committed at age 16 and suffered from multiple personality disorder, making his case raise an array of opinions. His childhood was confusing. When he was about six or seven, Sellers said he began to hear voices in his head, often criticizing him. As a teenager, he became obsessed with good and evil, God and Satan. He increasingly turned to Satanism, and by the time he was 15 and 16, Sean Sellers was practicing satanic rituals on a daily basis. He would store vials of his blood in the refrigerator, some of which he drank at school. He would perform acts of self-mutilation, such as putting sharp objects into his scalp. The former alleged Satan worshiper Sean Sellers was executed with Jesus on his lips. Sellers, after being injected in both arms with poisons designed to put him to sleep, stop his breathing, then stop his heart. Sellers sang and spoke to his witnesses before falling unconscious. Sellers loudly said, Here I come, Father, I'm coming home. He then turned to Warden Gary Gibson and said, Let's do it, Gary, let's get it on. Sellers then began singing, Set my spirit free that I might praise thee. Set my spirit free that I might worship thee. Those were his last words. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.